Hi, my name is Stuart Lynch, and in this video, I want to introduce you to the iOS and macOS Symbols Framework that was introduced at WWDC 2023. I'll introduce you to the different animation types that can be used with this discrete symbol effect, the indefinite symbol effect, and the content transition effect. Learn how to add simple and effective animations to SF Symbols in your UI. I love getting your feedback, so tap the thumbs up button if you enjoyed this video and leave a comment below. Make sure you subscribe to the video and ring that bell to get notifications of new videos. And if you want to support my work, you can buy me a coffee. I have a starter project for this video and I recommend that you download it from the link in the description and work along with me. That way, when the video is completed, I'll have some code that you can refer back to when you want to implement SF symbol effects in your own projects. I have some views prepared with some system images laid out in form sections so that we can start adding some symbol effects and compare how each one works. Currently, as you can see, there are just static SF symbols and no effects are applied, though I have added the occasional symbol rendering mode like when I want to display a rainbow here in full color on this view. Or this palette with custom foreground styles here for the weather image. Now this view does have two state Boolean properties that will allow me to display different images based on the state, and I can toggle them by tapping on either one of the images in each of the two sections. Now because the forms display their content aligned to the leading edge, I've also created a view modifier called Centered that will center the content in an H stack and set the section height to 100, unless I choose to override it. And you can see that applied to the content on each of my sections. The Start tab view here is just in case you want to run this in your device or simulator and be able to move easily between the views. We'll be doing it all in the canvas, however. In iOS 17, SS Symbols got Symbol Effects and the Symbols Framework, and this is built right into SwiftUI and UIKit without our having to import the framework. And there are five different types of effects that we'll be looking at here. And there are seven different animations that we're going to be exploring here in this video, as you can see from this image taken from the WWDC presentation. These animations can be used in one or more of the four different symbol effects categories that we'll be exploring. And those are the discrete symbol effect, the indefinite symbol effect, the transition, and the content transition symbol effect. Discrete and indefinite and content transition are the most powerful, in my opinion, and that's where we'll be spending most of our time, though I do show you the transition effect as well. So let's start with discrete. The bounce, pulse, and variable color animations can be used with discrete symbol effects. These are animations that apply an animation and return back to the initial state. But as you'll see, we can apply some options that may make some of these animations continue to be applied. Let's look at this first section here where I have four SF symbols. Each discrete effect will require a trigger to initiate the animation. And I'm going to use the same trigger for each of the three images in this H stack. So let me create a state property that I'll call discrete trigger one, and I'm going to assign it an integer zero. Now, anytime the value changes, this was going to initiate an animation. So let's create an on tap gesture after the centered modifier and increment the value in this closure. So now let me apply some of these new symbol effects. For the first one, the thumbs up, I'm going to start with symbol effect modifier, and I'll see that discrete effects require a value that will initiate the effect and that will be our state property. And throughout this video, I'm going to use the new multi-line feature of Xcode, where if I press Control M, my properties can get separated onto separate lines. I find this much clearer now and easy to enter my values. So if we tap dot on the effect property, we see we have a number of choices, but not all of them work with the discrete effect. We can only use the bounce, pulse, and variable color. So we'll choose Bounce. The trigger will be our discrete trigger one. Now when we tap on the section, the thumb scales up 
and then right back down again with a bouncy animation. For the next one, the heart, let's choose the pulse type. Again, using that discrete trigger. This time you see the image fade slightly before coming back to full color. Now for the multicolored rainbow, let's use a variable color effect. When we apply this effect and trigger the animation, we see that the different colors, which are all layers, all fade out, then back again, in one at a time, and then finish with a pulse fade out and back in. Now the interesting thing is that the variable color here has nothing to do with the fact that I've applied the symbol rendering mode here to multicolor. Not all SF symbols, though, have variable colors or layers. If you open the latest beta for SF symbols, I'll leave a link in the description, you can tap on the variable color selection and select any one of the images. And you can go to the inspector and tap on the new Animations Inspector tab. Now, this is a little confusing because there is no distinction between discrete and the other types of symbol effects that we'll be exploring. But as you can see on this page, we can choose Bounce, Pulse, and Variable Color. Now, if you select the person.3.sequence.fill image and then choose the Bounce animation, you can click on the Preview to see what it looks like. If you try Pulse, you'll see it continues to pulse, and we know that a discrete animation doesn't do that. This means that the pulse animation can also be another type of symbol effect, not just for discrete. If I choose the variable animation, you'll see the same thing. It fades out by layer, but also continues to do so after, meaning that it can also be a different type of symbol effect. There are also lots of other options here, but I'll come back to these. The important thing to note is that you can see which images you can apply the variable color animation to. So returning to Xcode then, let's apply that same symbol effect to this person.3.sequence.fill image. In the next section then, let's create a new trigger state property, but this time we'll make it a Boolean and I'll call it discrete trigger two. Now I'm using a Boolean, and it doesn't really matter what the trigger is as long as it can be an equitable type and that it can change. So a Boolean can change, it can go between true and false. So I'll create another on tap gesture for this and toggle the value in the closure when it's tapped. Now let's start adding some options to our image system effect. So this time we'll choose the options discrete type and I'm going to choose Bounce Effect once more. But for the options, I'll enter a period, and I'll see the options that I have available to me. So let's just choose Repeating. And then the trigger value will be our new discrete trigger 2. Tapping now, I see that it continues to bounce. The issue here is, though, that there is no way to stop that thumbs up bounce, as it's discrete. Once the trigger has tapped, it goes on indefinitely. So for the heart, let's apply a pulse symbol. But for the options, I'm going to specify a number of repeats. And I'll specify only three, again tied to that discrete trigger two. This time when I tap, it pulses for three iterations, and then it stops. For the multicolored HomeKit image, though, let's just apply a variable color with no options for now. We see that it goes through the variable color animation, then pulses at the end and stops, and it's a rather slow animation. Well, what we can do is we can apply an option and set a speed, which is a double. So I'll apply a speed of 4.5. Now that animation moves through much more quickly. Well, we can also chain options together as well. So for this Wi-Fi symbol, Let's apply a symbol effect of variable color. And then for the options, I'm going to chain first a speed of five. And then I'm going to apply a repeat for three times. Again, with that discrete trigger two. 
So now when I tap, I see that Wi-Fi symbol now go through its variable color layers three times and quickly. As noted in that last view, there is no way to stop a discrete symbol if it has a repeating option. If there is no repeat option, it animates once but stops. So let's take a look at an indefinite effect. And this is an effect that, once it has been set in motion, will continue with that animation indefinitely. I said that some of our animation types can be both discrete and other types. And the bounce is discrete only. But pulse and variable color can also be applied to this new type of symbol effect. So let's look at these. I have these images here in this first section. And an indefinite effect uses this overload where we can have an effect and optionally some options and something else that's going to make it active, which will be a Boolean value that we can toggle to stop. So first let's take a look at where there are no options or an is active property. Let's just set our symbol effect to be pulse. Be still my beating heart. Well, this will allow me to do the same for a variable color too, like this one on the ellipses. This might make a good loading image. With variable color in an indefinite symbol effect, we can chain additional styles and interactive layers as well. So if you bring back the SF Symbols app, we can search for Wi-Fi and check out the inspector, and we'll see the effect of different styles and interactive layers. And as a bonus, when we find one that we want, we can tap here and copy the configuration. So let's use that here in our view. Still, we can't stop any of these animations right now. For that, we'll need to add an isActive argument, and that's our Boolean state property. So let's create a state variable called trigger, and we'll initialize it as false. And then, as with discrete, let's add an onTap gesture that will toggle this value. So now we can apply this indefinite symbol effect to this heart, but include an action that is bound to that trigger. I'll try a pulse. Now when I tap, the heart starts and pulses green with envy. And it continues until I tap again. That Boolean value will toggle and it'll stop. For the thumbs up, let me apply another animation with an is active trigger that we have not used, and for that, I'll use a scale animation. We do, however, have to specify which way we want to scale, either up or down. So let's choose up. Now, you might think that this appears to be like a discrete animation, and that this scales up but once. It scales up, but once. It has nowhere else to go, so it's continuously being scaled and staying at that up scale state. It'll only scale down when we tap that button again, and it toggles the is active state and makes it inactive once again. Now for this last weather icon, it doesn't look too good to me, so I want that icon to disappear. I hate bad weather. I don't want to use an if else case to display it because that will remove the image from the hierarchy and our other two images would shift. So what I would normally do is where I set that opacity using trigger and the ternary operator where if trigger is true it'll be zero otherwise it'll be one. Now the trouble with this though that is when it's zero after I've tapped no matter what I do if I try tap now here where the icon was that tap action isn't received. So what we can do here, though, is use a symbol effect using the disappear animation that we've never used before. And we'll tie this to that trigger. Now when I tap, it disappears nicely. 
And then if I tap in that same location again, it reappears. Now, if I bring back the SF Symbols app and change one of my images to a disappear animation, we see that we can also choose a direction of up or down for scaling as it disappears. The default is down though, so let's apply up. The final symbol effect that I want to investigate is the content transition, and this is very useful. So currently in this first section, I have a button where the label is an image with a system name that depends on the value of the trigger state property, either a play or a pause image. So tapping now, we see that it changes from play to pause, and that's immediate. Well, I can do better than this. We can apply a content transition modifier to the symbol. And this takes an effect that is a content transition symbol and a symbol effect. So we can create that symbol effect, which is an indefinite one. So all we need to do is provide the type, which is replace, that will replace the image. Now tapping on the play button does a nice transition from play to pause. You could also play with other options by choosing to replace by layer with a multi-layered object, down, up, off, up, or up, up. So I'll let you play with those to find out what you like best. I like the default, which is down, up. The initial scales down, while the replaced one scales up. Now for the final example then for our heart, let's use that same content transition here too, where it's the content transition where the symbol effect is replaced. So now we see that when we like something, the is liked, which is triggered by the on tap gesture, will replace the image from an unfilled heart to a filled one. But I can do even better than this by applying a discrete symbol effect as well on its own. And this works because this replace is an argument of the content transition, so there'll be no conflict. So we'll add that discrete as a bounce transition which is triggered by that is like state property too. I love that effect, it pops. Well, that's it for symbol effects. I hope you've learned something here that will help you liven up the UI for your apps. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and leave a comment. This helps drive more traffic to my channel. Thanks for watching.